Welcome to the Prophetic Edge. I'm your host, Larry Sparks. And on the Prophetic Edge, our goal is to hear what God is saying prophetically. Because when you know what God is saying and you respond, you will always have the edge of victory in your everyday life. My guest today is Apostle Tim Sheets out of Ohio. And Tim is somebody that the Lord has been using just in powerful revelation just before we started this. I mean, this is just an example of how Tim operates. He was saying, you know, there is a difference sometimes between information and revelation. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that the Lord in this season in which we're living, a new era that you've been calling it and other prophetic voices have been echoing that, recognizing we're stepping into something new. The Lord is releasing revelation. I believe he's giving us new language for a new day. And I, I, Tim, you, you've done this book, New Era of Glory. Could you give us a little bit of a history? What, what has led you to release this? Because again, I believe this is new language for a new time that we're stepping into the body Absolutely. of Christ. Absolutely, I'd be glad to. And it's good to be with you, Larry. Yeah. And uh, the new era is, the reason I, I went there uh, with the new book is I felt like somebody has to, or maybe more than one, but yeah, a bunch yeah. of us need to define the new era. Mm. Because if you don't have definition, then it can it can get off track. Yeah, yeah. And so I wanted to know what is the biblical reasons for it. And I looked down through history and I saw where defining moments, sometimes we call them tipping point moments, yes. uh, are, are moments when who whoever rises and defines the moment activates the new direction. Yeah. And I felt like the church has got to stand up and define this moment. If, if people don't understand we're in a defining moment in our nation and in our world right now, yeah. look at uh, of all the people that are trying to define our moment mm. from socialists, yeah, yeah. Uh, liberals, our universities, yeah, yeah, yeah. and their definition for our world is not the biblical yeah. definition. And God has said in his word, I want my church, my ecclesia, yeah, yeah. to provide that definition. In fact, that's the reason why he called his church the ecclesia. Yeah, yeah. It is a defining body. Mm. Um, Jesus said, I will build my church, Matthew 16, 18, yes. and 19, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'll give them the keys to the kingdom, and whatever they bind on earth be bound in heaven, and loose on earth is loosed in heaven. That has to do with defining things. Yeah. Um, tipping point moments are decided by who defines mm. that moment. Our king has called us to define the moment. Yeah, yeah. So he said, my church will be a defining body, and he used the word ecclesia, yeah, yeah. which is a which is a political word, it's not a religious word. Well, he didn't use the word, he, he didn't say, I'm gonna build a temple. He didn't no. say, I'm gonna build a synagogue. He said, I will build an ecclesia. Which is a, a governing body. Yes. It is a lawmaking body, and in Jesus' time, the ecclesia, which every time you see the word church in the scripture, yes. 113 times, it is ecclesia. Yes. So he didn't slip. No, no. And if you, if anybody would have used the religious word, you'd have thought Jesus. It would have been, yeah, yeah. But he didn't. He used a government word. And ecclesia is also, um, in Jesus' time, it was the group that decided who sat at the Areopagos, mm. which was the Supreme Court of those days. Wow. So we are to be involved yes. in who sits in at the Supreme Court. We are to be in, involved in codes of conduct. Yeah, yeah. And I felt like someone needed to define that and say, here's what God expects of us. Yeah. Um, it's not something that he's suggesting. He expects us to rise and define the moment, not let the adversary define it. Yeah. Because hell does want to define this moment and take us away from biblical principles. Yeah, yeah. And there are there are all kinds of examples that we could go into. Well, I feel like the Lord is saying, and this is one of the things he talked to me about this, reading your book, reading this language, I felt like the Lord said, when your daughter 
And m my daughter, I have a little girl, when her and her children and her children's children look at this moment in history, the moment in history that you and I are at, the moment in history that you are sitting at right now, mm -hmm. when our children and grandchildren look at this moment in history, when they read the history books about the moment that we've been sovereignly placed into, I pray, may, may we pray that they would actually see the imprint of the ecclesia. Like, I want to see a church rise up. What you're talking about, I love that language of defining the moment that the church, the people of God, not, not a building, not a synagogue, mm -hmm. that the people of God would arise. And I feel like what the Holy Spirit is saying, I want my people to challenge and contest the direction that history is going in, to bring it in alignment and in agreement with God's desire for history. I mean, absolutely. It is our assignment to bring it into a, an alignment. Yes. And it only takes a remnant because people get hung up on that. And they think, well, well, the numbers are too great yeah. uh, uh, against us. But down through history, it has always required a remnant. Yeah. And God will partner with that remnant. And right now, the word of the Lord to me just uh, a few months ago was, Holy Spirit said, I am now calling out my hidden remnant. Mm. And everywhere I go, Larry, uh, I travel quite a bit. I find a pocket of the hidden remnant yeah. that are willing to make their stand. Yes. They're not going to compromise. And God's going to take that hidden remnant and in a brand new era, we have to understand what that era is. Yeah, yeah. Era is brand new days. Yes. It's a new time. It's not just a new season. It's totally different days. Yeah. It's a totally different future. For example, the children of Israel coming out of Egyptian bondage, yeah. they entered into their promised land. That was a new era, yeah. totally different. Yes. No longer slaves, great breakthrough. They go from gleaning to owning. And that's where we're at in the body of Christ right now. The church and many of the people of God are gonna rise up and the anointing on a new era is coming. And we're going from where once we used to glean. Yeah to a place where we own yes. and the anointing and government of God, increased authority is going to show the world there is a better way yeah. and God's way is that better way. Yeah. Well, I wanna encourage you, stick around for this next segment because we're gonna define this new era more. And I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying, for 2000 years since the day of Pentecost, Pentecost was the inauguration of a new era. But I believe every revival and outpouring that has taken place in the earth since the day of Pentecost was God actually trying to bring his people into agreement with the new era that he was releasing. And Tim Sheets has a powerful word about what God is getting ready to do when it comes to the synergy of the ages, every revival and outpouring converging upon a single generation. So stick around, we'll be back in segment two. Welcome back to The Prophetic Edge. I'm here with my guest, Apostle Tim Sheets, and we're talking right now about what God is doing in the earth, and He is doing a powerful thing throughout the nations because His heart is really for a harvest of souls, which we understand, but I believe God is also after the souls of nations. He is calling forth nations to actually step into their identity. There's a glory upon nations, and I believe what we're doing right now in the earth, God is positioning His people for what many have called the greatest outpouring move of God in history. Now, it's interesting, Tim, I was at a church service recently in South Florida, and it was just a powerful move of the Holy Spirit. We had Heidi Baker, Randy Clark, mm -hmm. and uh, this is going to sound funny, but um, we were, you know, there's just a powerful manifestation of God's presence, and I had to go up into the soundboard area and do something, you know, non-spiritual, like tweak or adjust something. But it was funny, I went up there, and I felt like, wow, that presence is still up here. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't escape it. You've been in meetings like that as oh, well, where absolutely. you can't escape the presence. I come back down, me and my pastor look at one another, and I don't know who said it first, but we said this, I don't know what to do. Do you know what to do? And I said, no, and we're, we concluded, we don't know what to do. And the Lord spoke to me right there and then, and he said, that is the sign that you are entering into a new era, when you don't know what to do anymore. Absolutely is. Because we are then a position of trust Yes. The one who does know what to do, yes. who is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's in charge. Yes. And we learn to be dependent on that, follow his directions. And uh, a lot of times there's a spontaneity 
uh, that happens when the glory or presence of the Lord comes yeah, yeah. in those kind of situations that you couldn't predict, you no. couldn't, uh, uh, you couldn't script. Yeah, yeah. Because when God's glory comes in, revelation comes. Yes. Uh, a th- you feel there's a, an awesome boldness that comes into the yes. room. Um, there's miracles that begin to s- spark. And then, of course, miracles spawn miracles. Yes, yes. You see that all over. Remember through the uh, uh, Exodus? Yes. It, it was a great miracle. Uh, the Red Sea opens. Oh, yes. And miracles begin to spawn one after another to take them to the ultimate miracle. Yeah, yeah. So you can't script all of that. Yeah. God's glory does that. Why? Because the glory of God uh, is the weight of his presence, and it is is somehow in his nature alive. Yes. Glory is a living thing. Yeah, yeah. You can feed on it, Mm. and you can can, uh, be fed by it uh, in ways that are revelatory. Yeah. And that starts to happen. So that's why a lot of times prophetic words start to... Oh, yes. Uh, And you can't... You can't plan all of that. And that's the key. It's like when we step into something new, and I want to encourage those who are watching, when you are experiencing God and he's touching you or your church or your pastor or whatever, God is touching people in a different way. I think of Peter at the Mount of Transfiguration, that Jesus was there just full of, I mean, lightning was coming out of his clothes. He was there talking with Moses and Elijah. And it was interesting Peter tried to speak presumptuously. He said, let's build, let's build a tabernacle for each one of them. Yeah. Let's, let's try to do what we've known to do in the past. I read that story and I'm like, Peter was trying to build something that he had a context for. Because mm-hmm. they had an Old Testament context for a tabernacle. When glory shows up, yeah. we build a tabernacle. Yeah, right. But I feel but then of course, Peter is interrupted. A voice speaks from heaven. He says, This is my son. Listen to him. And I feel like what the Lord is saying right now for the new era we're stepping into, we need to have ears to hear the prophetic voice of God and not do what we've seen work in the past. Those things were great, but he is building a new operating system. The scriptures call it a new wineskin. And I want to dive right on in here. Three ways you can identify that it is time for a new era. And I just want you to share briefly on each one of these. Number one, fresh anointings of the Holy Spirit. What does that look like? Well, the day of Pentecost, it was time for a new era. Yeah. And the uh, power of God fell from heaven. An anointing came from heaven upon the 120 that were there. What was happening uh, behind the scenes is highly significant because in Acts chapter 2, what was happening in heaven was King Jesus had ascended and was sitting Mm. down on the throne of heaven. When he sat on, you can read the rest of the book of of chapter 2 of Acts, and it will describe it, where Jesus sits down at the right hand of God. And Father God takes a horn of holy anointing oil Mm. uh, and pours it over the head of Jesus, picturing what happened to the high priest in Psalms 133. Mm. That oil began to run down like it did in, in the Psalms in Aaron, yeah. off of his head, off of his beard, and dripped down onto his body. Mm. Now, his body was seated in an upper room yeah. there at Pentecost. So for the first time in all of time, the same anointing on the head is now wow. upon the body. Why? Yeah. So that we can do the same works that he that he did. Yeah, yeah. And Jack Hayford said something years ago. He said, when the anointing uh, flows down over someone that is seated, mm. a large portion of it settles into their lap. Mm, mm. And when they stand, the rest of it is released. Mm. A prophetic word came about uh, just a few years ago that we would be entering into a new era yeah. and it would be the standing king yeah. era. Yeah. Prophetic words in the book. It would be a standing king era when the king makes his stand. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought about all the anointings mm. down through history yes. that have been poured yeah. out from the head of the church, Jesus, which has a part of that anointing now settled into yes. his lap. You can go back to... <clears throat> Of course, the day of Pentecost, some of that settled into his lap. Yeah, yeah. You have the Welsh revival, some of it's in his lap. Charismatic movement, some of it's in his lap. You have 
uh, uh, the Cane Ridge revival. Yeah, yeah. Some of that's in his lap. Reformation yeah. with uh, uh, Martin Luther. Some of that's in his lap. But we are now entering into a time when all of the anointings down through the ages converge mm. together into our times. Yes. All the streams that God has anointed are now converging. And we're seeing evidence of that. Like and we're seeing the different conferences and events that people are doing. And you do see an unusual gathering of different streams, different people who maybe would never partner in ministry together, coming together for this. And it's working. Yes, it is. It's yeah. working. Uh, and the king then mm. makes his stand yes. as those, those streams converge. And all the anointings, a portion of all the anointings down through history, then are poured out, run down upon the church yes. at the same time. Think about how each outpouring down through history changed history, yes. defined that yes. moment. What happens when they come all at once? Mm. What happens when the healing movement of the 50s and 60s comes upon us, along with the charismatic and all the gifts, and the Reformation yeah. and the Cane Ridge and and they all happen at the same time. That's where we're heading. Yeah. We have about 45 seconds or so. Would you pray into that quickly? And then we'll finish this up in the next segment. Absolutely. Yeah. Lord, we thank you that your promise is huh. that we are entering into a new time, a new yes. era, whereby all the anointings that have ever been poured out will now be activated in our times yes. upon a glorious church. Yes. Send it, Lord, to every nation. Yes, Help Lord. us to define uh, this era in every nation and do what you said, Jesus, in Matthew 28, disciple the nations. Yes. And may they rise for such a time as this. Amen. Amen. Well, get ready. As we get ready for our third and final segment, we're going to say what we hear the Holy Spirit saying, and we're going to finish describing what a new era looks like. Two other signs that we're entering into a new era. Welcome back to the Prophetic Edge. Larry Sparks here with Apostle Tim Sheets. And we were talking about some of the ways that you identify you're entering into a new era. The first thing we talked about, fresh anointings of the Holy Spirit. The second thing, we could do a whole show based on this one, would be angelic activity, angel activity. The third thing would be the prophetic words of the apostles and the prophets coming together. I want to focus just a moment, though, on the activity of angels, because I was thinking every one of the most significant new era inaugurations in Scripture, you do see this abundance of angelic activity. So Never how been that... one that didn't. Yes, this one will will see more angel activity, this new era that has already begun, will see more angel activity than any other era. Mm. Literally millions and millions of angels are activated to assist us, Hebrews 1.14. They assist us. Uh, they're ministering spirits. And uh, we we have to have them. People yeah. say sometimes to me, why the angels? Why not just the Holy Spirit? And I'm like, well, it was his idea. It was God's yeah. idea. And he made us in such a way that we would need angels. And they are here to give us breakthrough. They're here to give us uh, help in the assignment that, that we have. And right now, uh, I've, I've actually identified seven different companies of mm. angels with billions in each company that are helping us define this moment. Mm. Um, and it's incredible to see what's happening. I, I really feel, Larry, the reason I wrote Angel Armies first, yeah, and yeah. I, I knew it was Holy Spirit yeah, yeah. planned. I mean, he spoke to me in an audible voice and, and said, this is 10 years or so ago now, when he downloaded Angel Armies yeah. to me, the greatest days in church history are not in your past. They are in your present and in yes. your future. Yes. And he began to tell me about angel armies and how they would assist us to get to those great days. Mm. One of the things that he showed me was government angels that assist the governing church, the, yes. the ruling and reigning church. And uh, it was incredible how he did that because he allowed me to see them. Mm. And that was unusual for me. I'm, I'm a pastor's kid. I'm a, I'm a pastor, and 
I like everything in place, you know. Yes, and, yes. And he was taking me in a different direction. Yeah, yeah. And I began to see them. I looked into the balcony one Sunday morning, and I saw a huge, I actually saw two huge angels, one with a purple sash and one with a blue sash. Mm. And so I couldn't wait to get out of service to study the colors. Yeah, yeah. A long story short, purple is the color of kings. It's a government color. Mm. And in governing type situations where the church was decreeing uh, or praying in governmental ways to change things, yes. to change nations, to change culture, those yeah, kind of yeah. things, I would see government angels, mm. these purple sash angels. I'll give you a couple quick examples. Um, a friend of mine, Prophet Chuck Pierce, wanted to do a conference in Pontiac, Mission, Michigan to reverse uh, the curse of, of the Indian chief Pontiac yes, because yes. of some atrocities of the, uh, uh, of, of the early founders. Mm. I looked behind the platform. He asked me to come. And these government angels had lined up with the purple sash all across the back. Yeah. And there was great breakthrough governmentally. I'm talking about spiritual government now. I went to Tucson, Arizona for an Appeal to Heaven conference with my brother Dutch. Yeah. And we were making decrees over the nations and the new move of God and the Appeal to Heaven has gone worldwide. Yeah, it's on, yeah. on every nation. And um, on Friday afternoons, we take two hours and just pray. I looked and all down one side were these government angels all across the back and all down one, the other side, 2,000 seat auditorium. And I had just made some decrees. Uh, and I said, I stepped off and I saw them. And I said, Holy Spirit, I've never seen this many. And he said, there are 51 of them if you want to count. Mm one for each capital, plus the uh, United States uh, capital. And then they had, uh, I don't know how many with them, to go into all the world. Mm. I said, why are they here? He said, they're here to get their assignment. Yeah, yeah. I told Dutch, we began to decree the word of the Lord over nations, yeah, yeah. over states, over everywhere, and the power of God begin to activate, glory came into the room. We could see in a tangible way, fog-like mist. Yeah. And those angels begin to leave as we declared for their regions. Tim, as we finish up, would you just make some, we have about a minute, 30 seconds. Would you make some decrees just over the nation? I believe the Lord wants to send his angels and release the manifestation of these decrees. Lord, you have promised. Yeah that in this new era, you would activate angel armies to assist us. Yes, Lord. Your church has made decrees after decrees. We're talking to people today that have prayed. Yeah. Lord, I yeah. don't know how many all-nighters we've had. Yeah. Uh, all over this world, there are prayer groups gathered together, yes. and they have sought your face and decreed what you have said. Now we're asking you, Holy Spirit, uh -huh. would you send the angels yes. that are to partner with that individual, those individual churches and regions and peoples around the globe in such a way that they begin to work and assist in connecting those prayers to their moment, connecting the prophetic words that the, that the prophets have dared to decree yes. into their moment and activate the power of your kingdom in yes. levels that have never been seen before for the reason yeah. that you have given. You want the greatest harvest in all of history. Yes. Let it be, Lord. Amen. Let it Amen. Be, Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of The Prophetic Edge. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for watching Prophetic Edge with today's guest, Tim Sheets. We'd love to hear from you. Please send us your questions or comments by going online to god.tv forward slash edge. You can also re-watch today's episode or any other program in this series at god.tv forward slash edge. Be a part of bringing content like this to the outer ends of the world. Go to God.tv. Become a God TV media missionary today.